Today on Shakedown, I'm going to share with you what I learned from my visit to the 2013 Rolex 24 Grand Am Endurance Race at the 33-degree banked oval and infield road course that is the Daytona International Speedway. The Grand Am Rolex 24 served up great competition and a fantastic finish in both the Daytona prototype and GT classes. And some info and insight about what's going on in sports car racing in North America now and in 2014 and 15 when Grand Am and ALMS consolidate. But to put it all into context, the theme of today's show is what is the real competition in North American professional sports car racing? And I'm not talking Audi versus Ferrari versus Porsche or ALMS versus Grand Am. That one's over. Or driver versus driver or team versus team. No, the things in competition are deeper and more profound than that. You know, what a week it's been on drive. Matt Farah drives a race car. Koenigsegg buttons down more details about his hypercar. The Spot 24 drive video is previewed with a snapshot of Eau Rouge. And Chris Harris goes all prancing horse. And F2000 racer Michael Johnson gets a great profile via Jalopnik on drive. You know, it was fun for me to do that interview and Max Seeger shot and edited the hell out of that video. And now I get to finish up the week with Shakedown and a thought-provoking show. Think of it this way. We've satiated your emotions with Carpron. We've brought you to Automotive Climax with Chris Harris' excitement. We tugged at your heart with Michael Johnson. All leading to the ultimate excitement. And I had to show you these three pictures. They're all sexual innuendo all over. Yeah, I know it's big. And uh, oh, sh forget that one. And now, in a post-coily automotive moment, you get a chance to relax and think a bit with me. Wait a minute. If I remember most of my social sexual gymnastics, the thought at the end of all that was usually, how do I get the hell out of here? Hold on, can I start the show again differently? Can we just... When I was at the Rolex 24 Grand Am race, I got a real feel for what's swirling around the racing minds of all the players. Teams, drivers, series officials, sponsors, and fans. And I kept checking for my priest caller because all of them seemed to want to talk, sometimes about things that should not be admitted. I watched the action, Audi coming to win. Really, everyone coming to accomplish something big. I particularly got intrigued with Wayne Taylor, his Corvette DP team, his mentions and movements over the weekend. Plus, I read an interview with Scott Pruitt, Grand Am racing icon and winner of the Rolex 24, on his thoughts on the Grand Am ALMS coming together and what sports car racing should be going forward. All of it got piled into my data logger and spit out today's topic, what is the real competition in North American professional sports car racing? Because the competition is bigger than brand versus brand, driver versus driver, team v team. The battles that Grand Am and ALMS working together are trying to sort out are more profound and fundamental. To the question of what is racing, and not just sports car racing, and typical to Shakedown, I'm going to be asking you for your opinion on everything I'm about to share. But before I start in on sports cars, let me address why I'm not all over the F1 car launches happening now and next week. First, all the tech is kept secret at these launches, so I'll wait for testing and some performance data before we discuss. Second, F1 is over a month away, so we got time. And I'd rather deal with racing data versus exciting BS like, hey, Ferrari just signed a Chinese sponsor. They did, they're first. Jensen Button will run the red number five and remind everyone about Nigel Mansell, but hopefully not Nigel's McLaren experiences. And Christian Horner renews with Red Bull until, I don't know, either the world ends or energy drinks are banned from public consumption. And some US and Canadian guys are trying to buy the HRT team to form Scorpion Racing. Yeah, sure, I'll watch that team at the New Jersey Grand Prix if you get my drift. Anyway, that earlier black and red F1 car was the 2013 Not Lotus. And by the way, that's how I'm going to refer to every Lotus brand of race car in 2013, because none of them are. But here's the new McLaren. Now, Ferrari launches today. We recorded yesterday, so we're both going to make sure we check it out today. And I've included the rest of the F1 launch schedule in the links below. OK, Daytona, Grand Am, ALMS, sports car racing. What is the real competition in North American professional sports car racing? And I'm going to try to explain everything as battles of two something versus something else, because that's kind of the way it really is. Number one, Grand Am race management, their style, versus ALMS race management. The politest way to frame it all is it's about constant changes in politicking versus advance notice and consistency. Now, neither one is perfect, but I'm talking two key areas. 
First, what is called balance of performance, getting the cars competitive with each other, and then race control, making the race run smoothly. And I'm going to tread very carefully here because while I have a lot of info, I don't have all the info. Up until Daytona, the merger happy talk was all about collaboration. And Grand Am and ALMS race management people have been working together. They've hired some ALMS people by NASCAR to be the decision makers going forward, and they worked on the Rolex 24 as a team. But Grand Am Balance of Performance uses a dyno, and literally they blew up two race motors checking race cars at the Rolex pre-race test. ALMS does it another way. But most importantly, they declare the rules, I think, like 30 days before a race, so the teams know the adjustments. And it was declared to me at Daytona that, quote, the days of last minute, night before adjustments are over. Yeah, and then the Corvette seems slow, the BMW's fast, and enter one Wayne Taylor, Corvette team owner and Grand Am icon, who after qualifying 12th, went on a wine fest with race officials, MF'd more than a few of them, and basically cried and threatened and God knows what on behalf of Chevy, his team, and the sanctity of racing and whatever. Chevy showed up with reams of data validating the inequity of, well, you know where I'm going and you know what I mean. So what happened? Forget the integrity, Friday morning, the day before the race, Corvette was given a last minute adjustment. Oh, and still Taylor whined. It wasn't enough according to him. He finished second, by the way. And during the race on TV, Wayne Taylor accused Chip Ganassi of racing unfairly and cheating. Jesus, does it ever stop? But the point of this question, number one, is about real competition in North American sports car racing. What is it? Will the rules and the racing be managed fairly or be run like professional wrestling with steering wheels? Next real competition, twofer, technology in the cars or not? Enter the next Grand Am icon, Scott Pruitt, and his interview on Grand Am versus ALMS. I'll put that article in the links below, and it includes his thoughts on what race cars should be. As the Daytona prototype racer and champion, he focused on DP versus the LMP2 cars, which will be combined into one class in the 2014 series consolidation. He thinks LMP2 will be obsoleted with only two or three cars entered. Scott Pruitt opts for DP and its old technology, and he literally called it that because it puts the car, in his mind, in the hands of the driver versus ABS and traction control. And I'll tell you that DP racing is often close and super exciting, so there's something going on. But the first question to you is, do you watch sports car racing just for the racing, or does the technical fascination of the cars also fascinate your reasons to be interested? Real competition number three, pro racers versus gentlemen drivers. You know, I got it. In racing, there's always been gentlemen drivers. Sponsors are hard to find. Someone has to pay the bills to go racing. I know all that. But at the end of it all, talent matters. And I have no interest in watching a trust fund baby racer, an AARP aged entrepreneur, or a CEO with a racing suit with a waistband of a number higher than the ambient temperature of the track surface. I want to see the pros. And at the end of the Rolex 24, at the end of that race, it was awesome because we cleared the field of all the gentlemen drivers, plugged in the pros, and saw real racing. Now, if I have to watch racing like the NBA and wait and tune in only at the end, well, I'm not sure. What do you think? Next real competition, private teams versus factory teams. Is this really about money or the depth and quality of racing? You know, as I mentioned on last week's shakedown, in GT racing, Audi and Ferrari didn't come to Daytona to F around. They may have hid behind teams and the customer racing logos, but that was as factory as it gets. In the Audi team paddocks, many of the crew members, those touching the car, spoke German. One guy from the Alex Job team says, for every one of us, they gave us two of them. There were Audi shipping cases with R8 parts everywhere. The maintenance on all three cars was all done at the same time, like some precision army. Dr. Ulrich was there to oversee, and in addition to the cars, parts, people, and factory Audi drivers, Audi gave the teams their race strategy computerized forecasting for the RHs they were running, and for the competition to figure out where they needed to be at the race to win. Ferrari had VMAX speed. Porsche had the car count numbers, but Audi had the knowledge. And as the race wound down, suddenly, magically, they got around to the front, and they got one, two. They almost had a full podium sweep, except for a half gallon of gas in that third car kind of ran out at the end. Oh, and by the way, Joni may love Chachi, Kanye may love Kim, but Audi and Porsche, they hate each other. Porsche has built a profitable customer racing business model that works, and they think Audi is messing it up, messing up a good thing. Not on the racetrack, but in the business of making money selling race cars. 
The VW group dinner table must be the biggest food fight on the planet. That's pretty much where the battlegrounds are. Yes, there will be more controversy when we get to the tire manufacturer decisions. Continental Tire is the tire for Grand Am, and they want to hold on to all of it with the merger. ALMS GTE is an open tire spec and will be, because everyone wants that class to not get ruined. The TV and media contracts will likely be another big competition. In the US, at the end of the speed TV coverage, the coverage was so fragmented, cutting way to ads, I swear to God, here's what I remember. Either Chip Ganassi won the race, or he saved a bundle on insurance, lost 40 pounds on some diet plan, or is the star of a redneck reality racing show coming to speed in February? Bottom line, they lost me. I almost couldn't figure out what was going on in the racing. So now, give me your comments on the real competition in North American professional sports car racing. Is it technology in the cars, or who cares about the car tech as long as the racing is close? And the gentleman driver thing. Gentlemen drivers don't bother me, or you? Watching them race is like knowing that I could do it too? Or screw this, pros only. I want to see real talent and be in awe of guys that can do things I never could. How about private teams versus factory teams? For example, when I watch professional racing, I want to see professionalism. So how do I get that with non-professional teams? If I want to watch wankers, I'll go to a lemons race. Ow. The 2013 Rolex 24 was a great race. And even with the Wayne Taylors and Scott Pruitts of the Grand Am world, everyone, including them, has embraced the hope and enthusiasm for the future of North American sports car racing with this coming together in 2014, Grand Am and ALMS. The Rolex paddock was full of all the players from both sides. And despite old habits and self-inflicted thinking that's normal within racing, it was genuinely felt by everyone that I spoke to, well, say for one guy, that Grand Am and ALMS will figure out the issues, those I mentioned here and all the other ones. And going forward, this will be better than it is now. Scott Pruitt in his article said one thing that was really on the mark. 2015 won't look like 2014, the first year of the merger. The translation, NASCAR is approaching this as a transition. Nothing is cast in stone. 2014 rules are set to accept as many current teams, racers, and race cars as possible to not obsolete equipment, investments, and throw teams out of racing. 2015 will be adaptive changes, but hopefully it will be done with advance notice and consistency of decisions, not last minute changes in politics. Okay, it's comment time for you, so go get them. And thanks for sticking around, listening, and thinking. Who loves you?